Okay, so uh, yesterday we've seen how we can search in an array and we've seen two types of searching the linear search and the binary search. The linear search is like the simplest one that we've been doing for some time, actually since Java 1 we've been doing this. You just look for a number, a value or a key, whatever you call it, and then you look it in the list. If you find it, you just return the position if you did not find it, you return minus one. <coughs> the, the binary search works differently because it just splits the possibilities in half every time. That's why they call it binary, like it has two parts. I'm just always going to take the whole array and then split it in half and see if the value that I'm looking for is in the middle. But the binary search requires something before it can work. That is, it has to be sorted. The array has to be sorted. If it's not sorted, it's not going to work. Now that's the prerequisite for the binary search for it to work. But for the linear search, it's not a problem. If it's sorted or not sorted, it will always work by just looking at every element and see if it can find it from the beginning of the array until the last element of the array. Now we've been working with arrays with primitive data types, well this primitive data type and int. Now I'd like to upgrade that to any kind of data type with a, a class data type. Now I'm going to do it slowly by just first of all I would like to write something similar but instead of an int that is going to be the array of int, I would like to have an array of string. <coughs> now I'm returning an int because I'm returning a position in an array. So now the array is an array of string, but the position is the index is always going to be an int. So I'm always returning an int, but now I'm taking as an input the list to be an array of string. Now the thing is, as soon as I make this a string, I cannot use this. Because I need to use equals, right? Because double equal sign does not work with a string. However, if it's an array of string, is the key going to be an int? No. I'm going to look for a value that is a string if it's in the array of strings. So that's why the key now is a string that I'm looking in an array of strings. And if I'd like to compare if a string is available or is equal to another string, I need to use equals. Right? You remember this discussion. And that's it. That's how I can <coughs> check that now upgrade this linear search from something that uses only an int to work with strings. Now I'd like to test it to see if it's working. Now how do I find an array of strings? I'm, what I'm going to do basically I'm just going to uh, I don't need all these so I'm not going to use any randomness for now I'm just going to I don't know let's just do something like this. I'm going to put this in, in comment and then I'm going to declare an array string this is my array equal I'm just going to put the values directly so it will be easier for me so what are the values I'm going to put I don't know Muhammad and then okay okay whatever that's enough so these are now this is my array of four and now I'm going to ask the user to enter a text to find in the array of course now my text is going to be I'm, not, I'm just going to rename this to make it uh, it's a value or it's not going to be an int it's going to be a string and I'm not going to be doing this but just next line I'm going to read the whole line whatever <coughs> I am not going to call this binary search but the linear search 
this time with not the number with this value that I'm looking for so now the element was found and then I'm just going to make a the element was not was found or not found based on the list now this will actually display this list so I can so I can have the list to be displayed in the array dot length and just <coughs> array dot i plus a space and go back to the line you know what I'm going to do this back to the line twice and then display this <coughs> there, are, there is this warning that I would like to I'd like to avoid for now but we can talk about it at some point we will talk about it very soon but I'm not interested in it now but just for the sake of being curious what would be this to it tells me convert to for loop well it's already a for loop but hey it does something kind of weird what is that well we'll talk about that so for now I'll avoid talking about it <coughs> so if I run this code now this is going to just display the this is the array this is the list and please enter a text to find now if I type whatever text press enter the element was not found if I run it again and then type Ali then the element was found in position 2 so it's it's working the same way as it used to do <coughs> right now what if I'd like to do this uh, whatever if I type something this is not available there now what if I'd like to now uh, convert I mean ov overload this binary search now to work with strings what I need to do is just copy again this thing and then paste it and instead of int it's going to be a string right it's mainly the same thing mm. and here when I'm comparing I'm just going to use dot equals and then but what about this one <coughs> now this one here less than it's pretty much available when I'm talking about ints or primitive data types in general but what about strings? Do I have a less than a string, a less than another string? No, this is what it tells me. This is a string. This is another string. And it tells me now bad operand type for binary operator less than. First type string, second type is string. I got, they don't have this less than does not work with strings. It works with primitive data types, but not with strings. Now, do we have something that does work with strings? I mean, is there any method we have here equals that is the equivalent of the equals signs the double equal sign but for this there is something less than greater than there is something that is available yes get the size well it, no if you just look at the sizes maybe the size is the same in terms of the number but does not exactly before or after <coughs> so there's something that I can use to do that and it's there's another method instead of equals there's something called compare to so compare to this is how it works now this compare to returns let me just uh, go to it this compare to takes another string and it returns an int so let's read about it. See, there's some this kind of code. I think it would be easier for me to read about it if I'm just doing this like this. So now, uh, can I s increase the size of this window? No. <coughs> so this compare to, it compares two strings lexicographically, which means it's just going to see if the list is sorted. It compares if t if two elements, which one comes first. Well, which one comes first based on what? Well, based on the letters. 
Now, how does two strings compare? Two strings compare if the first letter is before the first letter of the other one, then this word, first word, is going to be smaller than the other one. And that's if they have like both of them start with A, let's say, if I'd like to, let this go do something like this. <coughs> if I have these uh, here, now I have two that starts with A. Now, which one starts first? Which one comes first? If both of these have A, well, I'm just going to go for the second letter and compare the second letter with the second letter. Which one comes first? Now, obviously, the B comes before L, so I'm going to see this one first, then this one. Now, what if I now I'd like to sort this alphabetically from the smallest to the largest? Which one is the smallest? This one is then this one, then M from Muhammad, then Omar, or for Omar. Okay, what about something else? What if I use capital letters? Now, lowercase, no, capital letters are not equal, are not the same level as lowercase letters. A capital letter is after the lowercase. A capital letter is after the lowercase, which means if I have something like this, now, if I'd like to sort them, this comes first, because if I'm comparing lowercase a with capital A, lowercase a comes first. So that's how the sorting of strings works. Now I'm just not interested in the capital letters for now. Just what I wanted you to show to, to know what these are going to be. So now let's go back to this uh, compare to, because compare to is still is not enough. I, d I cannot just use it like this. Now this compare to, what does it do? It returns something, which is an int. If you remember, it says it returns an int. Now what does this int do? What is that value of int? Now this int has three possible, possible values. Either it's negative, or positive, or equal. If I say, oh sorry, if I do something like this, if I ask this question, and uh, if I'm comparing this list mid with the key and it's zero that means it's like I'm doing this it's like I'm doing equals this is exactly the same thing it's like I'm asking if I'm saying that this when I compare it to the key is equal to zero that means they are equal so basically I can just take this and put it here and it's the same meaning if it's equal then I found it, but I'm just going to make it here because it's more obvious. But we use compare to not with to compare to with equal or zero. I mean, we use compare to to know which one comes first, which one is smaller and which one is largest. Now let me show you something. If it's negative, it means that this one is smaller than this one. Notice the, 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 the direction of the smaller less than. It's made negative for a reason. Because if it's negative, the first one is going to be smaller than the second one. If it's positive, it means that this one is bigger than this one. So in our case, how this was. I mean, here we were looking at if the list mid is smaller than the key, then basically what I want, if this is compared to gives me a negative number, that means this one is smaller than this one, and then I need to do this. And now this compare to is a very useful method that is implemented in actually in the class string, but this compare to basically comes from an interface. I just would like to see here. You see this string implements comparable. It implements a string comparable. So, uh, sorry, it implements an interface called comparable. And we're going to talk about that, inshallah. <coughs> but for now, what all what we did is that we just made this change to work with the string. So now this binary search, if we just use it, Instead of this linear search, we're going to use a binary search. 
if we're looking for this, it's going to use now this. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to like put something in the middle so I can put some names that are going to be like sorted. You remember, with the binary search, it has to be sorted. And I'd like to find, uh, run it with using now this. So this is my array. And please enter the text to find in the array. I'm just going to say, uh, I don't know, Muhammad. So now notice what happens is that the low is 0, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's the highest 4, so the middle is going to be 2, 0, 1, 2, so this is the middle. And then what happens is that we, we ask, is this, how does it compare to this? Is this smaller <coughs> or larger? <coughs> so this one is bigger than the, the one in the middle, so that means that our low is going to be pushed to be here. So now the low is 3, and then the high is 4. When I use the, the middle, is going to be 3. Why? Because 7 divided by 2, 4 plus 3, that's 7. Divided by 2, that's 3.5. We just keep it as an int, so it's 3. And I get it. This is the position of Muhammad. That's where I find it. Now if I run it again with, let's say, I'm, I'm choosing the one in the middle, so it's going to be found immediately, just this is where we start, the middle is 2 and then it was found immediately. If I do something that is going to be like maybe the first one or the last one, so it's just going to go from the, this is the middle, there, and then it's going to try to find in the middle between the two and that's how, it, how it's going to be found. Maybe if I check another one, so it's just going to look at the middle to be 2, then the middle of 0 and 2, that's... Sorry, this is uh, 0, 1, 2, and then it's going to be between these two. So 1 divided by 2, that's 0 0.5, which that makes the middle to be 0, but it's not this one, so the other one. So that's how we can just make this work with now any string. However, how to generalize even further. What if we have, now we don't want to have just strings, we would like to make it work with any object. Now I can do that by just, uh, instead of string, I'm just make object. So now I'm going to generalize that so it will work with anything. It will work with the number, yes, but you need to declare the number to be uh, like an integer, not a, primi pr a primitive data type, but like a class data type, the integer class data type. Now, this is going to be more general, that you, this is going to work with anything. However, notice one thing. I have a problem. Because this compared to does not exist in object. It exists on anything that is going to be comparable. So I cannot just make it an object, but I can do this. Why am I, can I do this? Because, well, for this one, it just equals object. I can compare any object with any other object because the equals is available in objects. So I can use this for the linear search. I can use the equals, no problems. But for the binary search, I cannot use the equals because it does not have compare to. But if I use comparable, comparable is an interface. So everyone that is going to be used, like a string here, for example, what, I, what happens here when I'm using, I'm using this one, which, which binary search that I'm using. You see this binary search, I'm using the one that is using comparable. But I'm sending an array of strings. Well, string is implementing comparable, so it's just going to do some kind of upcasting, and it's going to work the same way like it was working with the string. Now, with the small difference is that now I can have any type of classes. For example, what if I have a, an array of students, and I'm going to create a class called student just for fun. 
Now remember, we used to have a class called student, which I'm going to make this int id and then string name and uh, double GPA. And I'm just going to add uh, these different constructors that initialize them all. And then uh, the getters and setters. And I'm going to do this kind of encapsulation because I would like to make them all private. Now they become pri private and have the getters and setters. And I have the two string. Uh, let's just have a two string that is going to display the two string. But also I need the equals. No, I don't need the uh, for the equals. I need to mention okay, how do I decide that two objects, two, two students are equal? Well, basically, I'm just going to make it easy and just compare only their ID. If they have the same ID, I'm going to assume that they're equal, just for simplification. Now, this hash code, I'm not interested in talking about it again. And now, this is what it does. Now, check this equals. First of all, it checks. If this object is equal to the one that was given to me as a parameter, then of course it's equal. If the object that is given to me as a parameter is null, of course they're not equal. And then I'm just going to get the class and see if it's the same class. So if it's not the same class, well, they're not going to be equal. Then if all this happens, that means I can do this downcasting. And then if they are equal, then I'm going to, if they're not equal, uh, the ID, this ID is different from the other ID, then I'm going to return false, else I'm going to return true. Now this is the equals that is going to work for me, for the student, which means now if I come back here, and instead of having an array of strings, I'm just going to have an array of students. Now, how can I have an array of students? Just like this. But I cannot just put this here. I can, but it will be more not really uh, interesting. I'm just going to put something like this: new students, uh, new students, and then what's the size? Let's put five students. That will be enough. Now, of course, I need to initialize those students. So, how to initialize them? Well, uh, sorry, this array zero equal new student. For each one of them, I need to specify the student. So, this is the ID. This is the name, and you know what, I'm just going to use this, and their GPA, whatever. Oh, you know what? I can use the random, so I can get like some kind of random number. And then whatever that random number. If you if you use random next something like like this this next int, it's going to give you a number between zero and one. A number between zero and one. But how oh, next int? How can it be between zero and one? No, actually, it's no, uh, not between zero and one. Actually, the which one is the next with the uniform distributed int value for random generator? Okay, now I, I think I, I need to have a number between, uh, I don't know, let's make it 5,000. So between 0 and 5,000 and 499, and just I'm going to multiply that by, I don't know. I don't know, just have a big number. So I don't know what this is going to give us, but I'm just going to find out. So one, two, three, and then four. And I'm just going to use those names that I used for these students. And I don't know, let's put some kinds of variation. So now I have an array of five students. I'm going to display that array. Well, of course, uh, not like this, because now every array is going to be displaying a lot of information. So I'm going to display them one line at a time. And uh, the array is, and this is what I'm going to be displaying. So if I run now, yeah, but now I have a problem. You see, uh, please enter the text to find in the array now. 
please enter the uh, ID of the student to find in the array. So now I'm going to make this to be the ID and next int. All right. Uh, now if I do this, I need to compare with the value. Uh, they don't have value. This is now my ID. But I, I cannot just compare with the ID. When I'm new is in a, bi a binary search, I'm comparing. I need to compare with the student because if I'm sending, I'm comparing students. I need to compare students with another student. Well, I'm just going to do this. New student. And then put that ID there. And then I don't care about this. This can be something like this. Why I'm putting this and uh, why is this uh, complaining? No suitable method found for brain students. Yeah. Well, let's let's start with the linear search because this one is going to work uh, immediately, and I'll tell I'm going to tell you why this is not going to work later on. But first of all, why do I need just to put the ID and nothing else? I don't need to put something here. Because in the equals, I care only about the ID. So I just don't need to put anything else here. I don't care about that. Just give me an ID, and I'm going to find if this ID exists based on that. That's how I decide that two students are equal. Now, if I run this, now these are my students, and these are my random IDs. Now, if I type like this ID 5, the emit was not found. But if let's run it again and type some kind of ID that exists, let's say this one. The image was found at position number one. So it works the same way as it used to. Just now it works with an array of objects, any kind of object. Because this linear search, this is how it does, it, how it, this is how it works. It works with, now this one works with any object. Because of this equals, all I need to do is to make sure that this class has an equals that it makes sense, then it's going to be fine. No. It's not like compared to. What do you mean like compared to? Equals is not like compared to. ID equal ID. Now what I'm doing is this linear search uses the method equals, right? This method equals exists in object. And if I want to compare it with my way, I'm going to make the equals exist also in the student. So I can use this specific way how to compare two students now actually this is not enough uh, basically I'm j I need to compare also the name and the GPA just to make sure that this is the same student but I just wanted to give you something really simple to work with now this is just working because all I'm using here inside this linear search is the method called equals that I'm comparing an object with another object now the list of i is one of the students, in this case, and the key is another student. And I'm comparing these two students, well basically, uh, just I'm comparing now these two students because I'm just looking at the ID of this, this one with the ID of the other one, they're given as an argument. <coughs> if they are not the same, it's false. If they are the same, it's true. Now, they are not, this is not like they compare to. But can I use this now, the same idea, in the binary search? No, I can't. Why? Because this student here and this array, can I put it inside this data type that I have int and int? I cannot put students inside int int, okay? So this is not a good option. Can I put it inside comparable? Comparable? Well, no, this is, this is not inheriting or implementing a comparable, so I cannot put it inside here. So now by doing this, I'm forcing all my classes that, needs to, that can be used here in binary search to implement comparable. Now, if I'd like to use that, close all others. If I'd like to use this binary search, I need to have my student to be comparable. 
And if I need my student to be comparable, I need to implement all the abstract methods. And in this case, I have only one, which is the compare to. I need to tell how can I compare between two different students. How can I know if a student is, is before another student? Is it based on the ID or based on the GPA or maybe based on the name? So th I need to specify here in this compare to how can I distinguish between an, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, an, an, a student that is before another one. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. Now, to be consistent with the equals, I'm going to say, now this is this object here. I need to, I'm going to compare to another object. Well, in my case, I'm just going to compare to, well, another student, but I need to compare with objects. So I'm going to do the same, the same code that I have there, which means I'm going to use the same thing here. However, I'm not going to return false. So, uh, the first thing that I need to do is to make sure that this is going to uh, r this is going to be possible to do a downcasting from object to this student. So that's why I need to check if the, the these are the same class. Then I'm just going to if this get class this one here is the same as the object get class because I want this to be I mean student so if this dot get class I mean this is giving me the this is the student if this student is going to be the same as this then I'm going to do the downcasting here this downcasting which is okay convert this object to a student so I can just compare this with the other now if this is equal I'm going to return zero and I'm not going to return false or, or true because this is uh, is going to be uh, returning always an int. So if this is equal, I'm going to return int. Else if if it's uh, this dot id is less than the other dot id, then I'm going to return what? If this one is smaller than the other one, I need to return a negative number or a positive number. Now this compared to return three type of values, either a zero, a negative number, or a positive number. Now if this one is smaller than the other one, am I going to return a positive number or a negative number? Negative number, because of this sign. If this is less than, so I'm going to make it, let's say return minus one. Else, well, I'm going to return one. Now this is going to work, but still I have a problem. Why? Because I'm still returning missing. What if this is not true? What if the what it was given to me here as an object cannot be downcasted to a student? I need to return something. So because if this is not the same class, I'm not going to get inside this if, and here I need to return something. What should I return? Now it's kind of weird. If I return a positive number, it's like I'm saying this is like bigger than the other one. If I'm returning a negative number, it's like I'm saying that this one is smaller than the other one. Can I put zero? I'm saying that they are equal. So now I'm in a kind of a big thing. But you know, among all the different options, the easiest ones now, either I have to choose either a negative number positive number of zero I'm going to use zero just not to put too much too many thoughts on that and not to get too much distractions or a distraction out of it because why zero because generally I'm not going to use compare to to see if they're equal I have another one that says these are equal but for I'm using mainly this compare to to say if it's lesser than or greater than and I'm going just to do that for now now once I do this now I have this compare to that it is not a problem if I come back here, you see now the binary search is not a problem anymore. But I just need to make sure of one thing. That my number here is going to be increasing. 
because you remember we said the binary search is not going to work if these numbers are not sorted now if I'm looking for a number let's say this one but it's in the middle it's going to be found immediately but let's try another one this one here now this is going to be a problem because this is going to be smaller than the middle the middle which means it's going to try to look at it inside here this this part here and it will not be able to find it so you see it was trying to find the one was not finding the list because it went here this is was the middle the middle is two this one and then it's try to went here this is from here the middle was here then the middle was here and then there was no way to find it because it's not sorted because the binary search requires that it is sorted so what I'm going to do I'm just going to make sure that this is going to be uh, always from smaller to largest do something like this some well maybe more let's let's be more uh, to make sure maybe the number is going to be something like small or just to make sure that it's got not going to be in a situation where I'm going to get something that goes out of hand I don't know let's see if this is going to give us always something sorted I see even that it's not sorted so I'm just going to increase that number Oh, that was my problem then. So let's try without being too fancy. So, and maybe I can just decrease every time. So I'm going to make sure that it's going to be small. I don't know, maybe. Hopefully. I just messed it even further. Okay, let's just keep it all like this 50 and then let's yeah keep going. Let's start again. Now probably it's going to be fine. Uh not really. Now hopefully we get something. <laughs> not all the time so anyways um, I could have done the same thing that I did last time just take this one and then increase it uh, but anyways now pff, still because the, the bigger the number is going to be that's why the less control I have it when I multiply it but let's just make it like this so now I have a smaller and then maybe I'll have a better control out of that so this is going to be much <laughs> just except for this one a plus would be more but the plus of what? Isn't zero? Yeah. So what do you suggest? Add instead what to what? Instead of multiplication, just plus? Yeah, plus. Or maybe this is just because it can include the zero, yeah. But okay, let's do that. So we're sure that it's going to be. So now if I'm looking for, let's say, 2506, it will be found, position number 3, is it position 0, 1, 2, 3? And then it's going to be uh, working with any, let's say, 3. So it's going to be found. Now, to do this, I mean, I, s I made this to be just comparable based on the ID. I, I could have done the same, but with the GPA, but then I didn't need to make the equals uh, also be the GPA. Now, there's something when you have the equals and compare to, nothing is going to force me 
to do something like this for example now I'm doing something weird here you see in this equals I'm comparing two students I'm going to say two students are equals if they have the same GPA but in the compare to I'm going to say they're equals if they have the same ID that's something that Java is not going to be checking you as a programmer if you have a equals and compare to you have to make sure that you're doing the same thing in both cases so you're not doing something kind of weird if you're co using equals it gives you compare the, the GPA but if you're using compare to you compare the ID this should does not make sense you should be consistent in both of these so if you're using the ID in both use the ID in both if you're using the GPA in both well use the GPA in both but don't use one here and one there so it should be the same criteria that decides whether if you're using equals it should give you the same results as of this one but Java is not going to check because it won't it's up to you when you have a compare to and equals to make sure that you return zero or true for the same situation if they are equal if they are this uh, instance variables are equals so now this concludes our talk about this uh, searching with this linear search and binary search but using any kind of object of course with this binary search we cannot use any object we have to use an object that is comparable so that's why we don't accept anything we only accept that something that is comparable and uh, what is this thing though we'll talk about that inshallah in uh, next week but for now let's just forget about it and you see we did not even pay attention to it and it did not hurt but we'll understand why later inshallah so now this comparable is our super class of any class that wants to use binary search of course it's not a super class it's a super type because this is an interface but I can't put a student inside of a comparable why because a student is implementing comparable so I can use also a string into the comparable because a string implements a comparable so whatever class has this compare to because that's my only requirement is that I need to use this method and it uses compare to this one is available all the time from object so every class that implements a comparable is going to be from object extended object so it will be available but this one I need it to be comparable so that's why I had to do this that way and that's how we can use the same technique and use it for any object instead of only using it with the ints or primitive data types is that okay so uh, I'd like you to practice that so let's uh, let's do it